Hello and welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Ariel. We are here at the Golden Municipal RV Park. Right now, I'm really not that happy with the park. Several reasons. One, see where those aluminum things are across the road? Well, right over there is the railroad. There's a railroad. There's some of the signal things that go off in the middle of the night. And trains were running up until one o'clock in the morning. Loud. Tink, 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 tink. Oh my goodness. So, if you like sleeping in silence or with just background noise, that is not the background noise you want to hear in the middle of the night. So, if you like railroads, this is a great place for you. They're constantly running. I think here, here comes one. Oh, it's not a railroad. It's not a, it's not a train. It's a, it's a maintenance car. See it? Maintenance car. That noise is nothing compared to what was going on last night. There's a little bit of a barrier because there's a very big river that runs through this park. Oh, there's the railroad. There's the trains down there. And there's some sort of river with lots, lots of glacier silt in it. That's what makes that color, which is what I found out when we were in Alaska. So this is glacier runoff water. pretty massive river. You know, the sound of this water would have been fine in the middle of the night, but it was masked by the sound of the railroad. So here we are, and there is Wanda, the other side of this dike, which is a walking trail. We have only 30 amp, that's it. There's no sewer, there's no water, we, I filled it up to 40% yesterday when we checked in at their sewer, sewer site. We also had potable water. So you can fill your tanks here and they do have a sewer dump. We're not going to do any of that. So we're going to walk down to the office. The park it, itself, again, is nice. It only has electric. We were fortunate enough to get a site that was 30 amp. They have 20 amp sites also. So, supposedly they have 50, but they were all taken, which I think is closer to the main office. But it's a lovely walk over here in this walkway. <laughs> and the park's right here, lovely river. And the pine forest smell is absolutely wonderful. Oh my goodness. It smells so clean up here. Oh look, they have water stations. Oh look, those people get to plug into water. Right over there. Oh, they're also all back in sites. There are no pull-throughs. I don't know how this guy got a pull-through. But they're all back in sights. I had to back in yesterday. It took two times, which isn't bad for someone who's still not comfortable with it. It took me two times to back in. Two tries, I should say. You are here. Oh, look at that. You are here. Oh, 
Okay, check-in time is 2 o'clock and check-out is at 11. I don't quite understand why there are check-out and check-in times. That's a three-hour window here. They don't do anything in that three-hour window. It's not like they're cleaning or leveling the campground, your site, because they don't. So why do they have a three-hour window for check-in, check-out? 30 minutes I can understand for paperwork, but other than that, that's ridiculous. You're not making the bed, you're not making the RV park or the site. You're not even leveling it. At minimum, what all these parks need to do is they need to level the site. I can understand they have limited facilities in regards to water, sewer, sewer on site, or electrical but at the least level your site okay that's my little rant it's not really a rant it's something and you're we're paying for this I think we're paying $40 a night here 40 just to park and plug in that's absolutely ridiculous and our site wasn't even level it should be leveled for something overnight, I really do think that these RV parks should actually level. I mean, there have been parks where I actually had to go outside and clean litter from the RV site, which is absolutely ridiculous. Why am I the one doing this? I should be charging them for labor. There is an elementary school on the other side of the street on this part of the park. And the park itself is still along the along this side of the street. So I guess if the dike bursts, <laughs> they don't really care about the RVers. They'll just get swept away. Okay, I cannot check out the bathroom because I didn't bring the code with me. So, not a clue what the bathroom looks like. Or the laundry. Oh, there's laundry! <laughs> Don't know what the code is, though. So. <laughs> oh, okay, so there's the laundry room. <laughs> it is $2 coin operated. Yeah, two washers, two dryers. That's sufficient for a park this size. Oh, they got a store. They open at nine, it's not yet nine. I guess there's more in this area than I thought. They have a planner for Golden. Well, okay, well, that's not going to happen. We're just passing through the night on our way towards Banff. And there's where you get potable water, the green, the green hose. And then the blue pole is for the black water. For the dump. Would I stay at Golden Municipal Park Campground here in British Columbia on our way to Banff on Highway 1? I would say only overnight. We're not here for long and this is a one-night stop only. I would stay only one night. If it's more than that, I would say no. They, the power is iffy, even at 30. I've already had to reset the circuit breaker twice. No, three times. Once yesterday, two already this morning when I was making coffee, it tripped. And then when I turned on the ice maker, it tripped again. It's like, seriously? So even at 30 amp, the water, the power is iffy. There is no water and there is definitely no sewer on site and the 
RV sites themselves, they're not quite level. And quite not quite leveled for one night is fine with me, but anything over that I, it has to be level. So again, one of my pet peeves is we're paying money to stay at these places and they should at least minimum level your sites because you don't really provide any other service than that. You don't go out there and clean because people do throw away their, their cigarette butts and little things around the RV. I don't know why people are such litter bugs. That really, I don't understand it. They're supposed to be environmentalists and all these nature people, and they're not. They're freaking litter bugs. Oh, okay. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye. All right, this I see all the time. Up here, I don't know why. Which is this? Why do you have so much crap at the side of your trailer? I don't get it. If this is how they live outside in nature, how do they live at home? It must be, ugh, disgusting. And really pretty out here. Aside from all the railroad noise that's going on across the river. <laughs> Supposedly they told me I have room for six more solar panels which I might be adding the six solar panels and changing the battery to a Battleborn battery. I don't want to buy the Airstream third-party promotional crap anymore because right now what I have is a Gerard, Gerard on-demand hot water heater that was a mistake. I did not quite realize they were giving me inferior third-party products for Wanda. I'm not happy with it. I should have went ahead and just not have them install an on-demand hot water heater, gone out and got a Truma. Because now I am going to go out and get a Truma probably in February. So don't buy their don't buy the Garrard one. The Garrard one has to have a certain water pressure in order for it to work in the shower and also in the kitchen sink. If it's lower than that, it's a, your hot water heater is only going to work in the bath in the bathroom. And in order to take a shower, you got to leave the bathroom hot water heater bath, bathroom hot water running a little bit or halfway. In order for it to get hot water everywhere else it's absolutely ridiculous so I'm not happy with the product that Airstream sold me I find it to be a third-party inferior product you know what you've got someone who's willing to spend thousands of dollars on upgrades and you sell them inferior products it's it's not right so having this one ripped out that Airstream installed and putting in a better quality one.